Welcome back, gang. David here at Signed and Slabbed. As always, if you like these videos, please subscribe, hit like, leave a comment, ask a question. I'll do my best to reply timely. But by following and liking, you will help YouTube push this these types of videos out to other people that want to see it. And, of course, tell your friends. And you can also find me on Instagram at Signed and Slabbed. Anyway, today I'm going to try something a little different. I'm going to have to piece this video together, but I want to share with you my newest set pursuit. And so I will talk at the end of this video a little bit more about how this kind of came together and the, the steps that sort of happened along the way. For me to acquire these cards but i think that they're super cool i think you're gonna like them too and so with that i'm going to switch recording devices and show you the cards so stay tuned okay i'm back i've switched device i'm gonna go with my phone for this because I want to be able to kind of zoom in and out on some of these cards. So, without further ado, here are the cards that I'm going to be set collecting now. Allen and Ginter Stained Glass. And specifically, I'm going to go after the first two years of them. So, the 2019 and 2020. So, one of the reasons I chose to do this... And I say a lot that if you're patient, your cards will find you. People obviously know that I'm a big fan of Mookie. And it turns out 2019 was the first year Allen Ginter did stained glass. And of course, first card in the set, my main man, Mookie Betts. So one of the reasons I love these cards, you can see that they're in a mini format. You know, not dissimilar from tobacco cards, but Allen and Ginter is known for several different versions of minis in their products. But one of the things that I like about these cards is just the colors. They're really unique cards. They have cool designs. You get a really good mix, I think, of sort of current players and other legends. I mean, man, look at those two, Chipper and Freddy. I mean, that that's your Braves in a nutshell right there. Next up. I wanted to see the Griffey. This is just such a cool, fun way uh, to collect some guys that are no longer playing, but also just have a really pretty unique looking card of, of players that you follow now. So I just think that these are fantastic. So I'm going through some of the pages. Obviously, I've got these, you know, in numerical order in these binders for those wondering. Look at that, Jackie. I mean, this is just such a unique card. I'm not a huge fan always of going back and adding some of these Hall of Famers to every single set that, that Topps puts out. But I do love it. I, I love these particular cards. And, I mean, look at that. Two greats just side by side in the set. I'm sure that that was intentional. Look at this. Ripken, Yaz, Mr. Smile. So... As you know, I, I, I'm a big set collector. And so these just really appealed to me. So we're, we're walking through the 2019s. I'm also going to do the 2020 set. But the 2019 is my focus. Now, one of the reasons I stopped here and, and actually should have stopped on the previous page. Let's just go back and do that real quick. So these cards came in the Allen and Ginter, they come two different ways. The base set of stained glass each year is, is 150 base cards. And those 150 cards 
for the base will usually be the same image as all the rest of, of that player's base, Allen and Ginter for that year. And then start the final 50 cards. So there will be 200 stained glass in each year. The final 50 are what's called the extended series and they come out of the Allen and Ginter rip cards. So there's, again, there's a couple different ways to get them. You can, you'll just hit them in the regular packs from time to time. But, you know, the way to sort of assure you get one is, is normally in like the triple rip cards. And so this page here is where the extended set starts. And so the with the extended set, it'll be a different image or what, you know, call it an image variation from what the base card looked like. And so, again, just the colors on these things and the designs, I just think are, I mean, they're just fantastic. I know some people maybe that don't collect many cards would, would appreciate these, but I, I think until you've actually seen, when you see a few of them in hand at shows or you buy a couple and get them home, you know, I and I'm obviously I'm displaying these with the white background so you can really just see how great the colors are on these cards. Um, you can, uh, one of the ways to store them, it's probably one of my, one of, I'm going to leave these in binders, obviously, for now, because I want to uh, put the sets together and be able to flip them. But uh, if you're a player collector, the, uh, the one-touch holders also come in a mini size. So, you know, when you don't have that many of these, I and, and the point being, I don't know that you need to get them graded for them to look cool. Just put them in a mini one touch and you can sort of display them anywhere. Uh, and from a grading perspective, these things are actually can be pretty tough. And I'll go back and show you one of these previous sheets because it really does point out well some of the issues that can come up. So if you look at these, one of the big things with these cards can be centering. So you can you can see this Ian Sale is a fair bit high on the card and it's a little bit to the left. The Griffey is pretty decently centered left, right, but I think it's actually down on the card a little bit. And so, you know that and and because they're made of like acetate they will scratch pretty easy so i most people believe or, or maybe the the stated production run on these things was uh 25 of each card is, is how what most people believe is out there so they're pretty rare to get whether it's you know hitting a pack or getting it out of a rip card but uh you know, they, they will scratch easy. You can have some centering issues. 2023 has had some pretty bad centering issues from what people can tell. And so that, that makes grading on them tough. Nines are pretty good grade. I have a, I do have a handful of tens. But again, I just, I think these things will display so well once I've sort of completed the set and have the full page binders. So these are your 2019s. Let me get the 2020s ready. Hold on just a sec. Okay, so back with 2020. So here's your 2020 Griffey. So again, 2020, same thing. It'll be 150 cards in the regular set and 50 in what they call the extended. The regulars come in the packs and the extended are part of the rip cards. So th this maze is interesting for whatever reason, he was not included in the 2019 set, which I think was weird. So if you are a player collector, jump out there and make sure you look at, at the checklist. You can find those online in several different places. So, you know, here's a guy for me, Craig Biggio, Astros great, Hall of Famer, Look at that rainbow uniform, just 
really cool looking colors, I think, on these cards. Another one with some guys that I personally like, you know, Fisk in your Red Sox. Just look at that thing. I mean, it, it, there's something about them that, that appeals, I think, not just to modern, but also even to vintage. Warren Spahn, I mean, really underrated in the history of baseball as a left-handed pitcher. One of my favorite players of all time, Ozzy Smith. I, just, I mean, I absolutely love this, love this card. And... I, you know, I, I need to study them a little bit more to see if there's any sort of consistency around, you know, some of the, like, because you'll notice here, this is a good example of it. So your trout has that kind of circle above his name and then the full nameplate. Otani's just sort of the straight nameplate, but then Chipper has the you know, almost little teeth cut into the nameplates. I don't know if there's any consistency to how to, you know, why those were done. It's just sort of a random thing by card, but you can sort of see, well, and actually, because these are put together in number order, maybe that's it. Maybe every, here's Ortiz with sort of the, I don't even know what that is, couple of maybe little eyeballs or something. And then, your dot, your full, your teeth. I don't have any of the multiples of five in that one, but we'll look at it here. Yeah, look at that. I just sort of discovered that as I'm, I'm looking at these with you guys. So there's a, the Correa is like a five, the DeGrom's a five. So they're put together with, with small little differences like that, which I think is just, again, pretty unique. I mean, the, Hall of, I mean, these guys are all, uh, your future Hall of Famer types. Look at that Frank Thomas. Like, how do you not like that card? Finishing up here. Got your Babe Ruth, Rivera. I mean, I just, I love that card. Wonderful pose of him. Great smile. Here, Here's your Yankees, Reggie, just waiting to hit another World Series home run. You got Ichiro. Griffey, Big Unit, all these are part of the extended series for that year. So again, just great looking, great looking pictures. I Again, when I think, I think once I have all these full pages together, they're just going to pop. And, and this is, this is the sort of thing that is a collector. These sorts of things really appeal to me because they're, you know, again, 25 of each card. They're not super easy to find but they're not so hard that I can't run run them down. So I, I did, I bought a couple of, of the Ginter collectors out on these, which was actually a super fun part of it. And I'll, I'll tag them um, on Instagram and I'll, I'll probably, I'll mention them in the comment here. But a couple of people that I'm friends with in the hobby that were, you know, consistently showing collectors and the things that they're after and and you know these Ginter collectors as I've discovered I mean they're very very focused on what they do and they're very very passionate about these cards and so and in fact one of the guys that I did a deal with he gets some of the tops like the tops living 8x10 portrait types types of cards signed so when I ended up buying him out of all these minis he was actually, he's going to be using that money to put towards expanding his autographed 8x10 collection, which was, a, I think, sort of a really cool feature of being able to do the deals with those guys because, you know, I know he feels like his cards coming to me and becoming part of a set pursuit was really a big deal. Like, he didn't, he, he, he had not fully devoted himself to these particular cards from Alan and Ginter. He, he works on some other stuff, but he was also into the autographs. And when we started talking, originally I was just going to buy a few of them, but it sort of became clear to me that this was just a project that made sense for me. Again, I love doing sets. I like kind of unique stuff. I don't, 
I don't necessarily love serial numbered and that that's one of the things with these they're not serial numbered but they are just such unique cards and you know the 2019 and 2020 being the first couple years it just again it's just something that kind of made sense to me and so I guess the last thing I'll talk about and let me go grab a 2019 real quick I do actually prefer the 2020 design, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about why. So looking at these, your original 2019 has the Allen & Ginter logo to the right, and then your player name to the left. And I, I think, again, I think these cards just, they still, they look fantastic. But I probably have a preference for the 2020s because I get a little bit fuller logo there. And I get almost like a nameplate, so to speak, for each player, which I think is sort of cool. And uh, I'll put them side by side. You know, this again is something different. Different people have different preferences on these on this sort of stuff. But, you know, for me, I probably do like the 2020 design better, but it wasn't the first year. 2019 is your first year. And so, again, that just played into my decision when I made the deals because both the guys had a pretty had a pretty good group of cards from both of the years. So it sort of just made sense at that point to be, OK, these are, these are the sets I'm going to put together. So anyway, I hope you guys like these. I will be on the hunt for these more. You're going to undoubtedly see it in some of my mail days. So I'll be talking about them more. But I mean, this is likely going to be a multi-year pursuit trying to run these down for me because, I, you know, I'm looking for specific cards. I have just under half of each set at the moment. So, you know, it was a pretty good jump start when I made the deals, but... Um, still quite a bit of work to do, but I like that sort of thing. It could take me a couple, three years to get these done. And, you know, that's something that is going to be, it'll be a lot easier for me to focus on this and, and really just be satisfied as I kind of keep going one card at a time towards completion. So anyway, appreciate you all tuning in. I hope you like these things. And if you got any questions, let me know. If you got any available, certainly tell me too. I'm, I'm player collecting across all the years, but from a set perspective, I'm going for 2019 and 2020. So if you see anything, let me know. If you've got anything, want to make a deal, also let me know. So until next time, this is David Assign and Slab signing out.